Hi, this is Paul on the Road, and I'm Paul. So I got a surprise this morning. It's Thanksgiving morning, and I woke up to no DC power, meaning the batteries are all dead. Um, that means the lights don't work. Uh, the refrigerator don't, doesn't work. The uh, Anything that runs on 12 volts. Um, is no longer operable in the rig. So I'm going to take you along on my diagnostic journey here and uh, show you what uh, what that entails. The uh, first thing we're going to do is check battery voltage. If you don't have a DVOM, it's, it's an essential tool if you're going to do this lifestyle. You don't need an expensive one. I bought this at a local Ace Hardware for like 20 bucks. Uh, you can go to Harbor Freight and get one cheaper, but uh, that would have been a 40 mile drive from where I was at the time. So I just went with the, I paid more and got this one. But Harbor Freight has little cheap ones for, I think their cheapest ones, like six bucks or something. Okay, so this is a negative. Gray is negative, blue is, is positive so it's connected right now and you can see I've got zero volts so now I know the batteries are my problem where I'm at right now I'm in uh, Arizona and the site that I'm in has a cover over it so my solar panels are blocked from the Sun so they're not working at all but my understanding was that the inverter you know was an inverter charger so it should be putting voltage back into the uh, batteries when it's on and it's on all the time so i'm not sure why that's not working but but uh first we got to get the uh, dc lit up and then we can figure some other things out now the charger i have which i did buy at harbor freight is an automatic battery charger and what will happen i'll do it for you to show you but what will happen is the battery charger will not turn on because the batteries are too low so you have to somehow recover the batteries uh, to give them enough voltage for the charger to to start working but i will show you that there the batteries are all in parallel meaning positive to positive negative to negative um, so it shouldn't matter where I connect the leads they're all connected so it's like one big battery um, so I've got the charger connected and I'm gonna plug it in and it's saying please put the clamps on I don't know if you here I'll show you that It just, there's no battery voltage, so it doesn't think they're on. So now what we're gonna do, and this is, this is why you want a little portable generator. Um, at least it's come in handy. So, um, I've experienced this once before, so I kind of know what's happening here. But what, what I'm gonna do here is I have a generator, a portable generator, you can just, you can just see the, the top of it here. So I'm gonna start the generator. And I'm going to put the leads, again, on any positive and negative, positive, negative. And now the charger has started to connect. So this charger doesn't have a, a setting for lithium batteries, which these are. If these were lead acid, I would have killed them. I would have had to probably had to replace them because you do not ever want to drop a uh, lead acid battery to, to zero. The thing with with uh, lithium batteries, you don't ever want to charge them with more than 14.7 volts. That will damage them. Uh, so as long as you're monitoring the volts, uh, you're you're okay. I'm I'm still under 12 volts. 
but it'll go. Well, I figured out what the root cause of the problem was, and uh, I filmed it all. And unfortunately, the SD card in this uh, in this GoPro somehow got corrupted, and when I put it into the card reader, it uh, the files were, it needed to be reformatted, and I lost all the footage. So I'm going to try to recreate uh, what I what I talked about a little bit. And so the problem was this disconnect switch right here. It's a battery disconnect between the inverter and my battery bank. And the inside of it is, is melted. You can really see it on, in this. You can see the melted plastic right there and the little rubbing block. I don't know if you can see it very clearly but it is uh, definitely seen some heat and that's why the uh, batteries were not getting the charge that was being sent by the uh, inverter the inverter charger because it was being lost in the switch the test is known as the voltage drop test or volt drop test and what you're going to measure when you do the voltage drop test is um, how much voltage, just as the name implies, how much voltage you're losing across a circuit. So in this case, the switch should be pretty much just a pass-through. There shouldn't be really any, any drop uh, or any, any substantial drop uh, of voltage across the switch. Standard is it's 3% of the of the circuit, three percent of whatever the value of the circuit is. In this case, a 12 volt circuit. So three percent. Uh, I'd have to do the math, but uh, uh, I'll I'll add it to the screen. I'll, I'll do the math and, and add it to the screen. Um, but let's measure a new switch and see what it does. Now I'm waiting, kind of stalling, hoping that the charger will turn on because one of the criteria of doing the test is that the circuit be loaded. Um, in other words, in my case, the, the charger should be running, should be passing current through to the batteries, and right now it's not. But we can still do the test, um, and I want to point out, if you're watching the meter there, and it's, you see it's jumping around, as soon as I short the terminals, it goes to zero, which is, is what you want. And when I put it on here, what, what we'll be reading is, is the value the voltage drop value. So let's do that. Point 0.5. Now, that is not point 0.5 volts. That is point 0.5 uh, millivolts. I'm in the 200 millivolt scale. So a um, thousand millivolts is one volt. I know because I've done it when the inverter is on that it's a little higher than that when the when the load is happening, and uh, I what I've measured the peak that I've measured is 1.9 millivolts. Again, a thousand is one volt. So that's how you do it, and it may come in handy someday. And you might be wondering why uh, you couldn't use the the ohm scale on the on the meter and just ohm the switch out. Well, if, if I had it apart and I was measuring it, I would probably see um, pretty high resistance across the switch, but, but when you don't want to take the whole set thing apart, you have to use the voltage drop to find it because of an ohm test, um, well, I'll show you what, what we get. I'll switch it to ohms and see it's, OL means out of limit. And when I short the terminals together, it's zero, which is what I would expect to be calibrated as. And if we go to the same, do the same test, we're, we're seeing zero. Now you see that minus number there? That's something that I should talk about. That means that I have the, the leads in, uh, reversed. It doesn't, doesn't change anything, it just means that the, the leads are reversed, and you're not going to hurt the meter by doing that. In fact, okay, now I'm in a 20 volt DC scale, and 
negative to negative, positive to positive, and you, we got 13.26. If I reverse them, nothing happens except I see the minus sign. Uh, so don't be worried that you're going to short something out by, by uh, putting the leads in the wrong place. But if you see a, a minus, that means you've got the meter is reading uh, whatever it is in, in reverse. And uh, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.